All right. So we've touched on this a little bit, but um, you sound, one of my question was, are you excited for the VB verse and why? And it sounds like you are, but uh, you want to give me a little bit more of feedback on that? Joey. <laughs> I am excited for the VB verse because I really want to wander around with my name Joey in there. So I hope that, because I just want, because I imagine if you see the, like the OG nicknames, it's kind of like a, you know, it's like a, it's like having like a medal from being right, first right. around. But yeah, it's like, you know, these people have been around, they've been grinding BB with you, right? Like, I'm interested to see how the Omi token is going to be worked in. I mean, you know, they're in a real uphill battle with the Omi token with how it was set up before. So they really have to create a whole new structure for it. I don't know if they're going to have to change what the supply is. Like, I mean, they're kind of, they were in a tough spot last time I, I saw into that. So I'm really interested to see how they put the Omi token into the VB verse, what kind of activities are you going to be able to do? You know, like, what are you going to be able to do exactly with your characters? You mentioned driving around, like, what's that going to look like? How is that going to look like? Is that going to be browser only? You know, what the browser only feel is going to look like, stuff like that. What that will do with the asset prices, is that going to make some of these assets more valuable because they'll be able to enter into certain contests or, you know, because that can really change the value if they go, oh, you know, only this brand can get into this event and this event's going to be televised well then that's really you see what i'm saying like that's mm -hmm. these are strategies that we're kind of using right where if you decide that you want to boost a certain asset and you have organic distribution channels but you also have paid distribution channels as well too so if you do want to do paid marketing behind an event or behind an asset or behind an idea in addition to your own organic ones right and the bb verse is basically a way to host those events and create content about anything now for when you're VV. So when you're building out your marketing strategy around the VV verse, I mean, it kind of is a whole new world in terms of what you can do versus just like having a community call with Reese and, and uh, you know, one of the guys to be able to get their feedback there. Now you can have events around the IP that you're putting into the game, you know, and that's like next level, boom, boom, right? So it's like, I'm excited to see what they do with that, how that affects things and how that moves things around. Yeah, and from mind of things, um so i'll say i'll start off by saying like i in the venture capital investing stuff that i do i get approached quite often by people who say, have this metaverse project and it's this high fidelity open world cross chain ecosystem yada 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 and my answer is always i don't invest in metaverses and there's a reason why i haven't really bought any metaverse land i don't invest in metaverse tokens i on the whole and in terms of its fragmentation in its current form, I'm not a big metaverse believer. However, that is because I, I think I think people have given too much weight to the idea of the metaverse versus the practicality of the metaverse. And by that, I mean, let's compare it to like websites, for example. If someone came to me and said, I have this great website where it has these beautiful graphics and you it has it's very it's very nice and it has these cool text boxes you can type stuff into and all these fancy cool fun things it's a great url that's not worth investing into what's investing what's worth investing to my question is going to be okay what's the experience who are your target customers what are you trying to do and the same thing can be said for like you know amazon is amazon not because of it, it's amazon.com but because they sell a bunch of different items and they get them to people in with if you have prime two days or less and um cnbc is cnbc because they have all these all the financial news like i think the metaverse is in this place where people are so enamored by the concept of it that the actual usage of it is kind of lost on people where that's where my that's where my interest lies and, and joey said a lot of this is i think a metaverse is only good as the experiences that comprise it and i and that's where we've gotten a, a bit away on the speculation when you look at like the sandbox and other sort of web three native metaverses where everyone was investing, but you're then in the spot where everyone's paid a lot of money to own land in the metaverse. And then you kind of look around at other people owning land and it's like, wait, wh like, why are we here? Like, no, like <laughs> no one's actually planning to do anything there. They just want, they want other people to do things there so that they can sell them these things to make more money off of it. And so I think, I think VB's a counter to that. Like I started off negative to get to my positive, which is you have this, 
like it, the the community was created first and then you're creating this metaverse as a place for them to congregate and i think a lot of times you see the opposite where you see i'm going to create this metaverse and everyone's going to want to be there and it's super high graphics and it's going to be so fun but then you actually create this metaverse and it's like wait this kind of sucks there's nobody here to actually enjoy things with so i think the point is they're doing it the right way in giving the giving the community a place to congregate as a means for what that metaverse is supposed to be and then ultimately then it's, it's i'm just curious as joey is to see like okay what are those cool experiences that you're going to enable your nft holders to have which in turn becomes a utility item in and of itself which stands to benefit the entire collection and ecosystem on the whole great answer that's next that's that's next that's next level sam that was interesting stuff right there i mean you you open up a lot about i know you got a few questions i know sam got to go but uh you open up a lot of like, <laughs> That's okay. like what what is a metaverse, right? Because Twitter to me is a metaverse. Like I have my Joe Ingram one account on Twitter, and off of that, you what's the utility of having a Twitter account is now I get to put my message out there and communicate with people from literally all over the planet. When you first start off, you didn't see what the utility was where it brought you eight years down the road with that asset. If we assume that's an asset, right? It's a free asset. We minted it for free and we built it up, right? And and stuff like that. So it's kind of interesting, like when you think about investing and ideas for VV, like my first thought VV is like, well, you can look at what other metaverses have done. You know, what has Twitter done? What has poker done? What has his other games done? And if you're looking for ideas to do and focus on, you could establish yourself as a pillar of events, live events, online events, education, live content, media, whatever, stuff like that. So it's kind of like an interesting like framework to use when you're thinking about investing in a project and you sort of look at the vertical place you can fit into the ecosystem to decide where to put your energy into and like in poker you know the gameplay the poker site is the most valuable thing you want to have like a poker site a poker brand live events uh training sites you go down you, you know playing poker isn't even really you know for some people it's one of the best things they could do but it sort of all works together they could all work together if you want to own multiple different kind of assets in that in that chain so that was sort of what your idea brought to me sam about about what you said so it was, it was real interesting stuff yeah awesome guys so to sort of um, segue towards the end here, I had reached out to my channel members and asked them if they had any questions that if it were they were in my shoes, what would they like to ask you? So um, I'll try to get through a few of them. I know we're um, running tight on time. So let me try and pick Let's go. out. Um, I like this question. Um, I don't know how much you've even looked at the app, Sam, but if you were to make a purchase on VV today, what do you know what you would purchase of everything that's on the platform or what you've heard of so it? yes so i don't know exactly but i'll kind of just talk through my line of thinking and, and let you know like where the stream of consciousness and exploration would go so at the moment my wife and i are as when we have time binge watching all of the old marvel netflix shows mm. like Jessica Jones, Daredevil, Luke Cage, Iron Fist. Some of them suck. Some of them are good, but we're pocket committed. We're like seven seasons deep into a 13 season <laughs> arc, each 13 episodes, an hour long each. You can put do the math and understand how much time and energy we put into this so far. But it's so my, <laughs> I have real affinity towards Marvel fandom in general to the point where I'm sitting there watching season three of Jessica Jones from 10 years ago or whatever it is. Um, so I, I would probably err towards that. And then I don't know, I probably, I'm a kind of a sucker for Captain America. I think that's kind of <laughs> like my favorite Marvel heroes. I'd probably be gravitating towards one of those editions, depending on like my desired entry point in terms of my ideal spend for that first purchase. Nice. Yeah, the uh, um, Spider-Man was the first Marvel NFT ever dropped on the platform. So that's, it's, uh, I love the way there's five, five? Yeah, five variants of it, um, and they all look just so clean. And that's that's probably outside of Disney is that's one of my favorite uh, on the app personally. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I got I got one of those drops. That was one of the ones I came back for. I was hoping for obviously the guy where he's flying down from the ceiling. You know, those animations are pretty one, sick yeah. for the for <laughs> Spider Man. Um, interesting what Sam said, right? Because maybe you could look at it. You know, your first one when you go on there, you probably just choose your favorite one, but. You know, if, if you look at what's going to be worth money in the future that isn't worth money now, you can probably look at the kind of content that the brand associated with the with the collectible is putting out next, right? Like maybe Darth Vader would be my first intuition who I'd want to buy, but are they really going to be putting out more Darth Vader 
material in the future, like what's the market for Darth Vader, where it is now to go up in the future sort of thing like that, right? Like what's the potential of it? Whereas if you have a new show that is starting to be re, re you know, pushed a lot or pushed hard, then that might be a good asset because then that, that IP is always going to stay in the media. It's always going to be out there. It's going to keep being promoted and you never know some crazy growth hack might happen with it where it goes up and then all of a sudden, right? Like your asset from seven years ago becomes valuable, right? Like Jane, the Jones show, I'd never heard of that character before, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know if she's in the BB verse, but maybe she is. And maybe, I don't know. Listen, maybe she adventures <laughs> 10 years from now. Who knows what's going to happen, right? But you look they're back actually, at- They're actually, the, the, that's the defenders. See that, but that's but that, to that point, like okay. that there's <laughs> it's it, it there's there's so much of like what we discussed previously that's encapsulated in that. Like I've now invested at least seventy hours into watching these shows that no one actually knows about. Like there's no like hardcore Jessica Jones fandom, but because Daredevil, the prior and it, like character appeared in the last Spider-Man movie in a very brief scene, I'm like shit. Now <laughs> I got I gotta <laughs> catch up now. Now I gotta invest my time. And it goes to show, like, that to have that passion and affinity towards the IP, it makes you do crazy things and invest a lot of time. Interesting, and energy. yeah. This the is no different. Is, the thing that I really love about your answer is that you did exactly what VV wants collectors to do, is that you didn't pick out, like, oh, I'm going to go for the Grail. I'm going to go for a Secret or Spider-Man. I'm going to go for a Walt or Mickey. Or, you know, you didn't pick out, like, one of the top five. You went to your fandom. And that's a beautiful thing. I love that. Interesting. So, so yeah. So they, they want it to be like, you know, this is where you get to live out your, it's like a Super Bowl or like a sports team. You know, it's like you wear a jersey. This is like your way to wear a jersey is to have, oh, that's interesting. I see that. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. They want, they, they want the platform to have something for everybody, for every fandom. You know, that's why they have worked so hard to secure all those licenses. That's why they have Al Khan as part of the team, because he's a genius at, at doing that. And and, you know, together, they're just all a dream team because they want to have something for everybody. You know, he's like, there's like a pony on my screen. That's the Tokidoki brand, which is a actual massive brand, um, especially in, in, you know, the Asian countries. So, you know, there's there's something for everybody. You know, there's the artists, there's, you know, the superheroes. Yeah. There's, have there's, you have you had Al Khan on your channel yet? I have not yet. <laughs> you gotta get that guy. You gotta get Elton on your channel. That'll be that'll be like he has been, he, bis, he has been popping up um, more places, so it's certainly possible. <laughs> It'll happen. It'll happen. Okay. What other questions right. did the community ask? So then, let's see. Um, which projects will benefit the most in AR and VR, and why? I guess that's kind of more to Sam, like. Uh, maybe something that you're working with now like because then the follow-up is overall which projects are you most bullish on that's a fantastic question to which i don't really have an answer <laughs> um and i and i mean i mean my answer is like projects that don't really exist yet like what i'm really excited to see are like the interactive because i mean we can all admit whether it be vv or a mint like the the minting experience in in by way of that the collecting experience in its origination experience is kind of lame like you just you kind of you go to a landing page and you hope to get lucky by spamming a button over and over again or uh, in the case of the case of the ethereum world upping your gas fee to, to front run other people trying to mint the same thing or grinding discord to get on an allow list that even allows you to mint in the first place Whereas I see a world that unlocks the potential of like Pokemon Go coupled with NFTs where the, the collecting ex itself becomes a quest of sorts, like a real, like a, whether it be a virtual experience or a real life experience in the AR sense where you're going out in the world and discovering things. And it's not for the purpose. It, and again, it goes back to not necessarily for the purposes of like, I want to I want to obtain this thing that's going to be worth a lot of money, which it could be, but rather like no one, no one set out Pokemon Go doesn't let you, doesn't let you trade Pokemon even, or let alone sell Pokemon. Like we all, I speak for myself, maybe uh, that summer of 17 and the years to follow, perhaps uh, showing my hand a little bit. Uh, we all kind of went, we went around sitting on our devices and AR around parks and, and landmarks and stuff just because we wanted to collect IP that we care about. So imagine if you're able to attach that to blockchain mechanisms and create like true rarity mechanics, collectorship mechanics, 
trading ecosystems around whether it be IP driven or not, but around something that you are experiencing in VR, in AR, whatever it is. So that's, again, not really an answer because this specific question was what projects today will benefit. But my answer is that I don't think projects today will benefit that much other than perhaps like a, a cosmetic vanity type sense, like, oh, now we've released our VR avatars or, or AR avatars, but it's actually going to be new things that are invented in the future that are going to really become the, I guess, the trends in the future. I think it'll probably be, it'll probably be the cars, right? Because the cars really right now, you can't really, you know, you could drive them around in the AR and like your home, but when you can drive the cars around in the actual BB verse versus now. So it seemed to me that items that like maybe move around more that can really be expressed in a different way, if that's possible. But I, I what Sam says is real interesting, right? Like what, once that experience is introduced, the new assets they build that work that integration in are probably going to be the ones and then i would just look at what are the most popular items that people would pay the most money for and to me that's got to be like the disney the mickey mouse ones disneyland kind of assets like that so that probably would be what i would look towards is those ones and a good follow-up to that is um how do you think the mass adoption of ar and vr will affect the nft market if at all I think, I think AR is the big one. Like VR, I, I, I had, I had an Oculus pretty early. I had PlayStation VR as someone like pretty native in this space. Like I didn't really enjoy it that much. I found it to be a very, um, what's the word? Like, uh, what, whatever the opposite, like a lonely experience. That's sort of thing I love. Like I was going to say the opposite of intimate where like you, you're sitting in a room with this thing on your head having an experience with people but like the experience isn't authentic whereas i see ar and its ability to get people out into the world and as i see it bridge that gap of the physical to the digital where the digital becomes reality because you and your friend who are holding the same device can both see it in front of each other even if it's not physically there i think that has a lot of potential so i think wait what was the, i already lost the question the question is how will what, what AR are... and VR affect the NFT market, the mass adoption of it? So I think, so I think, I think the NFT has really popped off the past couple of years because people were stuck at home and that's, there's a, there's a broader theme to be had there around the metaverse and gaming and everything and Robin Hood and GameStop and people needed something to do as they're stuck at home, not being able to do anything in the world. So they, they found things to do, which were trading JPEGs, which were buying crappy stocks and sending them to the moon. And we've all seen that kind of sputter out now that things have opened back up and people have begun to experience reality again. So I think that's the impact is giving giving NFTs a place in reality. And and I hate that, reality is not the right word maybe, but giving, giving them a place in our physical interactions and in our day to day that doesn't in my mind exist today. Like, the, the, like think about going to the grocery store and going up and down aisles and using AR on your device to unlock a brand deal on cream of rice because you encounter a coupon NFT in the, the grains aisle. Like crazy stuff like that, like that's obviously a silly example, but you can start to see stuff like that become feasible in all these different instances in the way that you engage with the world and the value that that could bring to not only the users, but the brands that could participate in that ecosystem. Mm, I like it. Well, wow, yeah. I mean, I think the I think TV may have talked something like that, where they had it where there would be certain brand deals in places where through AR or through whatever, then you're able to get it. Like that'd be an offer. So I, I think that's actually an idea. Isn't that silly? I think that idea is probably what they're kind of thinking about. So, but I imagine AR, VR. I mean, if I could go into my NFT and go around a metaverse and VR with one of my NFTs, I mean, that sounds pretty sick. But as Sam said, I don't really personally play VR, but my little brother is obsessed with VR. He played every day. He started building, he built a tour on VR. He, started, he went to school for game design, just graduated. So he built his first VR game. He wanted to, he's building his games on VR. So he seems pretty locked in on VR in terms of, you know, having that experience, what you're saying, right? That solo experience in the room. So it seems like a lot of people are really enjoying it, man. You know, a lot of people stay at home. That's what I realized. Like a lot of people got nothing to do. They're bored as hell. 
they don't go in the real world, like Sam was saying, and he said, if they get back to reality, a lot of people I don't think got back to reality. And I think they're looking for something to do. They're looking for a new experience. VR is starting, I think it's going to get, start to get more and more pushed here in the future. So that's going to unlock some stuff. Yeah. I don't, I'm, I'm excited. To and see I that. think, yeah. I, I think, I think a big trend here too on the VR side, which is where people have kind of written off the storyline, but with, with everything that Meta is doing with their VR devices, but then just environments and creating like a cross, a cross reality way to engage with one another. And by that, I mean, having, having a way that we can all sit at the same table, see the same things, but I can do it in VR. Uh, you, you both could do it in AR. Someone else can just, can literally just be like a zoom square. Like there's, like there's mixed realities that we're moving towards and you have the likes of Meta who are actively working on this. And I think then you create, sort of create a menu of options in terms of how people want to engage with the technology that they prefer. So to my earlier point, I myself, not, not a big VR guy, Joey's younger brother, big VR guy. So I could then, if I wanted to do, to have an interaction with Joey's younger brother, he could come to me in VR. I could be as I exist here. So this it's, it's, it's very exciting times. And I think, it, and we're getting a little bit off off track here into other trends, but thinking about the NFT space again, I think it's it's exciting to see how both brands and individual individual projects how they'll adjust to these rapidly changing environments. And I think there's a there's a way to do it constructively and gradually and deliberately. While I've seen actively seen some do it in a way that is hype driven, trend based, and short term oriented. So to finish up, I really like this last question. If you could add a utility or feature to the VV platform, what would it be? Joey first. If I could add a feature or utility to the VV platform, what would it be? I would have a nightclub in Las Vegas where I could only get in with my VV items and it gave me the greatest experience of all time. That would that would be the utility I would build is more of that. I have uh, to tell you, people are really um, pushing for, so um, David Yu wants to do a VV con, like his own, instead of like a designer con or comic con, he wants to have, they sponsor their own con sick. and everyone is pushing for Vegas. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. This might happen. I mean, that's, my goal. that's what I want then. That's exactly what I want, right? Like I got the name Joey and I got a bunch of my NFTs. I get to go to this event. This sounds great. That's that's all. That's what I'm looking for. Clip it. That's what. I, that's what. David, you shout out to David, you. Let's let's make that happen. Host it at. Uh, where's he gonna host it at? Where were you hosting at? The convention center. You don't know. No. Venetian. The win. We decided to <laughs> event at the win. That was pretty nice. What about you, Sam? This is. I mean, this is this is now your event. This is no longer a VV event. This is <laughs> this is a Joey out of line event with sponsored by VV. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see about that. I, so, it, so I, we touched on features earlier around like the cross cross chain compatibility, wallet connection, mincing and crypto, whatever. So I won't go there again. But and and I I briefly glossed over it earlier. But thinking about and this is this is not feasible. Let me just say this. I understand from the brand side why you wouldn't. But thinking about the power of the IP, and so there's there's actually some interesting interesting platforms I've talked to that are working on this, where historically there has been a need for IP holders to be very protective of that IP and how it's monetized outside of their own doings for good reason, where you don't want someone to take the Mickey Mouse ears, go on Etsy and create a bunch of backpacks and be able to sell those and monetize this iconic Disney symbol. And that's a, that's a very innocuous example, but that could be taken to, you know, not so family friendly ways. Mm -hmm. And ultimately Disney wants to make money off of it. But because of you know smart contracts and all the technology that underlies these things, I would love to explore some world where you open up the ability for community members and NFT holders to create create stories, create fan art, fan fiction create derivatives off of this IP that the originating IP holder can then monetize and allow, allow the community to, in, in creative ways, tell the story in their own way that is in, not only allowed, but endorsed by the originator and then monetized together. And I don't, mm. again, I understand the, the, the trepidation that an IP holder has in allowing 
their IP to go in whatever realms it may with, with outside parties telling the stories. But if they have a sense, a, a certain degree of auditing and approvals, I think it'd be really cool to see like, you know, for some of these iconic stories that have been told time and time again, so the test of time, how can different communities, different community leaders, advocates from different backgrounds tell those stories in new lights and find ways to keep them fresh and relevant to to modern day, perhaps. So I don't know, that's kind of where I go with it. It's like, so back to the utility, I would see the utility as like a degree of, if, if I hold an NFT for a particular character, I have the rights with originating approval to create stories, merchandise, paraphernalia, whatever it is, utilizing that character. And then I would monetize it in tandem with Disney, for example. So the one thing that I will say that that's kind of already happening that doesn't go to the level that you're wanting, but it's on its way there is we have um, extremely creative people in the community. Um, there is a group called the Vaultaholics and you have um, your vault inside your app where you can put all your collectibles and you can arrange them however you want. You can create a showroom and they create like actual art with what they do. Like it's phenomenal. I can't even begin to describe it takes hours it takes patience it's it's a lot it's amazing though what they do um you know there was one person who was doing um remakes of iconic movie posters using vv collectibles and so that's cool but the what vv is going to allow these guys to do in the vv verse is that i can say hey hey tails can you come into my um into my my house in the vv verse and i want you to design it and i want it to be wall-to-wall -wall disney but like next level and I will be able to like pay him to do that. So it's, and, and so he's I'll using pay him. I'll IP. pay him right now. I'll, uh, I'll happily, I'll happily pay him right now. I mean, that would be great. I might use BB more if that was the case. That's a good, you mentioned, what could I do? Somebody came in and could, and could make my vault look beautiful. Cause I, I tried, I tried, I tried. I'm, you know, it is what it is. I'm not going to try again, but who's, right now. Who, but, saw, who saw Metaverse interior designer on the 2023 career bingo card? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's, it's, that's like, <laughs> That's where it's going. And, and that's, again, VV also listening to the community is um, they want to make that. They they love the Vaultaholics and they want to give them space to, you know, stretch their legs and and do their thing in the VV-verse. And, and they can do so with the IP because they're not manipulating it from its natural form, but they're utilizing it to create art. Um, so it's it's the first step in, in what you're saying. But Good. yeah, cool. it's pretty cool, though. <laughs> With that, um, I want to thank both of you so, so much. This has been an incredible interview, probably one of my favorites ever. So much information, so much insight. Um, you've given me so much time. This will be a two-parter for sure. <laughs> um, but uh, loved catching up and, and sharing stories with you guys and hope that we can kind of keep the dialogue going and uh, stay in touch. And yeah, maybe Joey, I'll see you at uh, VVCon Las Vegas. <laughs> Uh, absolutely i gotta be there but yeah i'm down i'm down to do do this kind of stuff whenever it get my it gets me uh thinking about nft stuff like i said i don't talk to anybody that doesn't nfts so you nice. know now sam sam started talking now i now i got a bunch of now i'm ready to start an nft again you know so because the thing is like, you kind of have to <laughs> welcome uh, back yeah i know right whatever it is what it is but yeah the nfts are interesting so yeah uh, but yeah same to you guys yeah right. thank you for having us yeah, yeah thanks thank you thanks so thank you very much yeah that's 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 nice of you to have us on the channel and uh it'll be interesting to see how things progress keep me updated on everything for sure for sure reach out anytime all right cool. with that thank you and all right. see, you later. see you guys